Let f be a continuous real-valued function defined on the closed interval negative 2 to 3. Which of the following is not necessarily true? Okay, um, I suppose we'll just go through these one by one and, you know, either argue that they have to be true by, you say, by like quoting some results or something like that, or for the one which is not necessarily true, we just try to construct a counterexample. So f maps the interval negative 2 to 3 into R, and it's continuous. Okay, so option A, F is bounded. This is true because it's continuous on a compact interval, and so it's bounded. Uh, I don't know, there's, there's, you know, I'd have to think even for a moment about how how to, how to prove that, but there's it's pretty standard analysis or topology. Okay, the integral from negative 2 to 3 of f of x dx exists. Well, they wrote as f of t dt, that's fine. This is also true. Um, continuous functions can be, integral, uh, can be integrated. Nothing special there. Option C. For each C between f of negative 2 and f of 3, there is an x from between negative 2 and 3, such as f of x equals c. Okay, uh, this is true, right? Um, for all c between f of negative 2 and f of 3, there exists x between negative 2 and 3. such that f of x is equal to c. This is what? This is the uh, intermediate value theorem. I get the names of some of these sort of basic calculus theorems mixed up. Intermediate value theorem, mean value theorem, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but it's it's one of those. Um, you know, f, again, f is continuous, so there can't be a value, uh, and, and I've ordered these like this, right? These might be these might be flop, right? F of negative two might in fact be greater than f of three, but whatever. Um, for any value in between these two numbers, the function f can't skip over that. So, yeah, that's true. Give it a check mark. Option D. There is an m in. In the range of f such that the integral of f is equal to 5m. Hold on, so there exists an m in f negative 2, 3 such that the integral from negative 2 to 3 uh, f of t dt is equal to 5m. This looks false. Uh, well, no, this one might be all right because mm, I cheated. I looked at the next option, which is definitely false. Um, so this is true. Why is this true? Um, well, let's let k be equal to the minimum of f, and n be equal to the maximum of f. f has a minimum and maximum because it's continuous on a compact interval. So the integral from negative 2 to 3 of f of t dt, this is um, less than or equal to the maximum times 5. Uh, 
and bigger than the minimum times 5. Right? If I replace f with its minimum value here, then the integral becomes 5 times that minimum value. So that's this. And if I, yeah, so this, this actually is true. Um, because clearly, um, if that's the minimum and that's the maximum, then there is some number here uh, which, you know, if, if I replace, I can replace f with something between the minimum and maximum, which makes this true. Uh, and I suppose you replace it with the average, right? Let m be equal to average value of f. which, uh, I mean, m is equal to 1 over 5 times this integral. It's really just a question of whether m, it's a question of whether, you, when you write m like this, as that integral, whether that number is in the range of f. And it will be, because, um, I mean, it has to be between the minimum and the maximum, this number, uh, and one of the pre one of the earlier options option c basically says that any number between the minimum and maximum of the function is attained by the function okay so this one is true option d and option e is clearly false right this is the definition of the derivative at zero but given that the function is continuous doesn't mean that its derivative exists. So a simple example, f of x is equal to absolute value of x. Right? So the, the, the answer to the question here is e. This does not necessarily have to be true. Um, we can have a continuous function which is not differentiable at zero and it satisfies all the other all the other criteria. Um, yeah, not, not too difficult. Yeah, if I were, again, I cheated a little bit in that I glanced at the last, I'm not cheated. On, if you're writing this exam for real, <laughs> use any technique you want to get the right answer. But um, again, like I like to show the full thought process and full detail uh, when working out problems in my videos. So in that, from that perspective, I cheated a bit by looking ahead at one of the other options and instantly realizing that that's the one that's false. And so option D had to be, in fact, true. Um, but here's the reasoning, the reasoning for why option D has to be true. Yeah. Okay. Cool problem. Uh, I'll let you know if I find any mistakes. Thanks for watching.